Good evening, Edge Church and everybody joining us tonight online. Welcome to our chat on managing um, our mental health in the pandemic. And my heart is, and I want you to hear me, and I say this every week, my heart is that this will help us, it will encourage us, and it will support us in a time like this. That's why we're talking about it. And I do believe that God invites honesty. And if you feel like you are walking in the darkness, perhaps even in the darkness of depression in this time, hear me, I don't want you to feel ashamed about that. It's life in COVID. It's tough for goodness sake. It is an upside down, topsy-turvy time in which we find ourselves. You are not alone. Please hear me this evening. And so what I want us to do, you know what I've discovered when we get honest? It removes the stigma of shame. It removes the stigma of, well, I'm supposed to have it all together. After all, I'm a follower of Jesus. And so, you know what, in COVID, I've had to regularly connect with my psychologist. And this is essentially about saying, you too can reach out if you need help. So I'm Barbie Erasmus. And tonight we are going to be talking about a little bit about mental health in this topsy to be time. And I, I mean this sincerely when I say this, we are very excited to have Prof Mario Smith with us. Um, Mario, hear me, I so appreciate the generosity of your time, the generosity of your wisdom, and what you are going to bring to this conversation to us, yes, as a local church, but out there to the broader public. So um, this is a little bit of who Mario is, it's a little bit more than a little bit. He is more than just his title as prof, as psychologist. Um, prof Mario Smith is a clinical psychologist. He is also a Fulbright scholar and graduate of Columbia University in the United States of America. And he's also at the University of the Western Cape. He is currently employed as associate prof in psychology, and he's also the acting director of postgraduate studies at the University of the Western Cape. He has worked in clinical, um, academic, and research settings both locally and abroad, and he has also worked in private practice. He's been involved in training of counselors and student psychologists. He's a member of Urban Edge Church. Now we know Urban Edge because it's one of our churches. In the past, he has served as worship leader, youth leader, and choir. He's also been involved in several other ministries, including Youth for Christ. And I get excited when I say this because these are all of the ministries that I know and have been very connected to Youth for Christ, um, Campus Crusade, Scripture Union, and Philippi Trust. He's married has four beautiful children, is an avid gardener, and also loves musicals. Now, he doesn't know this, but let me tell you that Dr. Jen that we also had um, in one of our chats, this is what she has to say about him, and I love it. He's a mentor, a role model, full of wisdom, humble, generous with who he is, committed to uplifting others, and she says, when I'm big, I want to be like him. Welcome, Prof. Maria. It is really great. <laughs> to have you. She's cute, eh? <laughs> oh, very cute. Thank you so much, Bobby, and for oh. such a warm welcome. And uh, good afternoon to all the members um, of your church and um, anyone who's tuning in. And um, it's really a privilege to be invited to form part of this platform. And well done to you for um, thinking of this. It's really important at this time. I think you're right. You know, that I was reading, doing a little bit of reading around this, and somebody said, we do not have the playbook for COVID. That's why <laughs> the uncertainty, <laughs> we don't. That's why the uncertainty and with that comes the anxiety. So I'm deeply grateful for this conversation. But before we kick start with the questions, and these are questions, Prof, um, that we asked our congregation, because I want to hear them. I want to give them an opportunity to get honest and to talk about what's going on in their world. And so, but before we go there, because we're going to be talking through some of these questions, mm -hmm. just tell us, and I've asked, I've asked um, several of our folk who've been on this platform with me. In, in um, lockdown, we heard so many amusing and funny stories, and we've seen the creativity of people and memes on social media. Mm -hmm. So what have you done in order um, to be creative, maybe even a little funny? So maybe just want to take a moment and share some of that with us before we start. Right. So um, I, I 
you said earlier, I'm, I'm an avid gardener, so I've spent a lot of time in my garden, of course. Um, but I've spent even more time in my kitchen. So I've been practicing ah. all kinds of recipes, etc. cetera. And, um, and I've discovered that all the clothes I haven't worn during lockdown will not fit me when lockdown is over. Because <laughs> I'm oh. eating and tasting all the stuff that I bake. Um, but yeah, that's been really, really exciting. Just hanging out with my kids and my wife and, um, you know, baking and, and so on. And so I have a, a, a confession to make. <laughs> I love Christmas and I love Christmas movies. And so when nobody's watching, I watch these Christmas movies all year round. And so, uh, um, so that's one of my big de-stress funny things. Um, so the secret's out. Um, <laughs> okay, I love it. <laughs> I love Christmas as well. Um, love some of the Christmas stories, especially the animated ones. I get to watch yeah. it with my grandchildren. Absolutely absolutely love it so Mara thank you for sharing that and I thought maybe to kick start us off tonight let's talk about um, some of the signs of distress um, that we are picking up and even in our own lives I mean I'm experiencing some of these things in my, in my life and one of the questions that came from one of our members was what signs can we look out for in those we care for we shepherd and our mm -hmm. families that can hint at major instabilities in mental health especially in those affected um, mostly by lockdown. And then he just named some of them. For example, mom's keeping a straight face for the family, and yet mm -hmm. they have their own issues that may not be detected. Teenagers in terms of depression, anxiety, and then a, a big one, even the elderly. Uh, many of those yeah. who are alone and don't have family. So let's, let's talk about some of these things. Right. You know, I, I'd like to say that probably the most important thing to look out for is changes in behavior. You know, often, often the symptoms are less important, but it's changes in behavior. So if, if someone is quite quiet um, and keep to themselves, that's okay, but you want to watch whether there's a significant shift in, sure. in how they are quiet. Um, sure. If someone sure. is, you know, someone might be quite short-tempered, have a little bit of a short fuse, what you want to watch out for is whether that fuse is getting shorter. So it's often the changes in behavior um, far more than the actual symptoms. So that would be a really important place to start. Now, you can only notice the shift in the behavior if you know what your baseline was. You need to know what your baseline is. And this is why it's important that we keep contact with, our, with people who know us. Yeah. You know, so that they're able to, to, to notice and, and watch that. And, and we have to also monitor ourselves very carefully so that we are able to track um, and, and we are able to notice that uh, my fuse is a little shorter, I'm, I'm responding a little too sharply, etc. So that would be the first thing is, have you noticed any changes in behavior? Now, um, that could go from anything like eating, um, mm -hmm. not enjoying the things that you've done, uh, that you normally enjoy doing, um, you know, withdrawal, uh, procrastination, so it's a whole range of things that we, we could look at. But I think the three probably most important things would be um, to, to check changes in your mood, mm -hmm. changes in your sleeping, and changes in your eating. So those would be the three key things to watch for. Um, when you are under stress, usually people would either eat less or eat more. They would sleep mm. less or sleep more. Um, and, and those would be, would be really important things to track. That's really helpful. All the things that we experience and feel in our body. So uh, that's really helpful. Very practical. Something that we can be mindful of. And I love mm. what you said, you know, just track in with people that know you you know, that can speak, speak into, into that. So um, I don't know if you want to add more, but one, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah sure. let me just, uh, you know, so the one thing was, was, was tracking changes in behavior in, in the way that I explained. Um, the, the, the other thing that's really, really important is to track your thoughts. So our thought life is really important. And if you find that you are really becoming worried that you, um, can't think about anything other than COVID or you can't think about anything other than a particular thing. Um, those are all ways in which your, your thought life become 
uh, a big part of experiencing your emotions more intensely. So watching your thought pattern and, and how you think is really important. So I usually tell people to think about how they make sense of what's happening to them and what's happening around them and to find ways to have more benign interpretations, um, you know, to interpret the world a little gentler and a little bit more softly than we might yeah. ordinarily. So that would be quite important is to track your thinking um, alongside changes in your behavior. And then, of course, your emotional life is quite important. Mm. If your emotions become more topsy-turvy, you know, the fancy word for it is dysregulated, but when your emotions start feeling like it's a roller coaster, that would be important. Even if your emotions are not going up and down, but sure. they are more intense, that would be something I would be concerned about in, in terms of your general mental life, is the okay. intensity of your emotions and the, the, the um, changes or, or lots of flexibility um, in your emotions, that would be a concern. Sure. Okay. Really good. Very helpful. Thank you for, for that. Um, yeah, just that I'm going under that in terms of signs of distress. Somebody asked, what should we be looking for in a bird to ensure that those around us are okay, are not suffering in silence? And that's, I think, some of the things that you've spoken into, but maybe just one key thought around that because we know yeah we want to be mindful we want to be caring and aware of others in our mm -hmm. world yeah you, yeah i think it's quite difficult um mm -hmm. when when people are not sharing when they're not saying what's happening for them and then we have to rely on our powers of observation now sometimes we see in others what actually is our own stuff so yeah. i might think that that you're very really worried but actually i'm very really worried so sure. it's important to not um, over-interpret um, mm -hmm. our observations and to always make sure that we are understanding those observations in relation to what's happening in our own lives. So that's one just a cautionary note. Um, I think the, the, the key for me is always relationships, that people tend to share where there is safety, um, people tend to disclose where there is comfort, um, and where people feel that they can trust. Mm. So, so I would say that our biggest focus right now should be on building relationships and deepening our relationships to provide a platform for people to share when they are distressed. Um, of course, if we are concerned about someone, we, we can raise that, we can check in with them directly, but they are often more able to hear us in the context of relationship. Beautiful. So, yeah. so that that would be a very important thing to to be be in mind. Yeah, I think that's really helpful. And even in COVID, in lockdown, this time where there's a sort of limited movement, thank yeah. God we have this technology where we can still stay yeah. connected, um, still check in with each other, mm -hmm. a WhatsApp, a message, drop a meal. Um, yeah, and and I think that's that's key. And I I think. Yeah, also when it comes to relationship, um, Prof, is the, the whole thing around belonging, you know, so it's vital that we stay connected mm -hmm. and, you know, in your church background, my church background, life groups, connect groups, whatever we want to right. call it, it's vital, right. you know, so, so those connections are important. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. I just just on that, you know, uh, one of the, you know, we, we all know by now, you know, you wash your hands, you, you sanitize, you, um, you know, wear a mask and, and then social distancing. But I want us to think a little bit differently about social distancing. Okay. Yeah. It's not, I think it's an unfortunate term. You're right. It's not social distancing. It's maintaining physical distance so mm. that we don't spread the, the virus. But we shouldn't be distancing socially, relationally. We yeah. should be, be finding ways, um, and, and you've mentioned the number, a number of ways, such as the, the calls, the phone calls, the, the video calls and so forth. Um, but it's about making sure that right now, even though we are physically apart, we actually need to be really, really connected. Um, yeah. And so social distancing really refers to not putting ourselves into context where we socialize and potentially could spread the virus. Um, but it's, it's distancing physically, but making sure that we're still maintaining our relationships, because as created beings, we were created for relationship with God and with man. And I think that's quite important, that yeah. we have to live out that part of our lives. 
Beautiful. It is unfortunate that we gave it that terminology, you know, and yeah. So it, staying connected is important. <laughs> um, Prof, just some of the other questions. Um, Maria has the questions with him because we've been working through it. Um, what practical suggestions can you recommend staying positive and sharp during this pandemic? I spoke about we might not come out looking altogether fantastic, but we want to come out um, yeah. A little bit better, you know, not no. perfect, but just a little bit better than we went in. So wholehearted and engaged still, and knowing that we have meaning and purpose. Right. You know, that's a good place to start is to know um, who we are and Beautiful. to, as a point of departure, know that God has a plan for our lives. Mm -hmm. And so this, this seems like a really crazy time. We are dealing with a moving target. We, we really don't know what to expect from day to day. Um, some information we get may well be considered contraindications in a week or two. Sure. But I think what's important is knowing that God has a plan for your life mm. um, and that, that even the, the details of COVID may be new, that is, there's actually nothing that we, we don't have the resources to, to manage with. Um, and sometimes uh, those resources would be located within ourselves and sometimes sure. within our extended groups. So I think it's quite important to, to hold that frame of mind. The second thing is to, is to remember other times when you've been through difficult um, crises. So for example, um, many people don't know this, but I lived in New York for a while and I lived in New York City during the attack on the World Trade Center. Oh, wow. Um, and, you know, in that time, what struck me most was how the definition of trauma is quite different mm. for different people. Mm. So for my American classmates, they were very worried because they were being attacked on home soil. Yes. For my wife and I, we were very worried because, and it was traumatic, but we couldn't pick up the phone to let our family know that we were okay. So what constitutes trauma can be very different or traumatic can be very different for different people. So during this time, it's important not to assume that everybody is having exactly the same experience. Okay, good. And that your experience is valid. So mm -hmm. share your experience and also listen to the experiences of others from the point of it being valid and very real for them. Yeah. So, so I may listen to your experience, Barbie, and think oh, that's not traumatic, but it may sure. be very traumatic for you, in fact. So that, that, that would be a very important thing to do, is to, to remember that things are quite relative and how we respond to them would differ from person to person. And then there are some very practic more practical things, and those that I mentioned now may be a little bit more philosophical. Uh, but I think, you know, four things that I would suggest we do is first maintain a routine. You sure. know, the days can blend into each other. It's easy to go to all your work meetings in the track pants or in your pajamas. Um, you, just, you just turn off the video. Um, yeah. But maintain a schedule and a routine. Mm -hmm. You know, um, get up at a fixed time. You know, work out a schedule for yourself. Obviously, that works that you can follow. Because one of the things that happens when we become distressed Mm. is we engage in mood dependent behavior and then sure. we don't manage to follow the schedule mm. so the schedule helps us to just prevent that process but also helps us to uh, have an indication of how well we do mm. so maintaining a schedule is important and um, do things at at fixed times uh, the, the second thing is you know um, look at your vulnerabilities and, um, and try to, to counter that. So when I talk about vulnerabilities, it's really vulnerabilities to experience your emotions more intensely. Mm. Um, and I have a little acronym I want people to think about. It's called strong. So that's the opposite of being vulnerable. S is for sleep, get enough sleep. T is for take your medication as prescribed, not as you think it should be taken. Um, R, resist uh, illicit drugs because those alter your mood and your experience of, of the world around you. And then once a day, you need to experience a sense that you have agency, that you are able to manage, that you are able to do things. So that sense of mastery is quite important. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last two, N and G stands for nutrition and G is for get exercise. 
And those five, those little acronyms are very simple thing to do is to just review sort of your experience in the world and, um, and see whether you are able to manage those things. Because when you don't, they actually impact the intensity of your emotions. And the one thing COVID is doing is that it's raising a number of emotions for us. Yeah. And, and we should be experiencing those emotions appropriately rather than more intensely. Yes. Yeah. And I think that is key right there, you know, just being able to regulate it, acknowledge it and, and feel it. Um, Maria, thank you for that. Um, love the acronym as well. Um, it helps. It really does help in a, in a time like this. So I want to move on to look at the, this. There's a whole lot of questions. Um, I'll try to give shorter answers. No, no, we're loving it. It's, I think it's all sort of blurring and blending into all of these questions. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? So, so it's, um, there's so much, uh, like one was asking, how do I stay positive when there's so much uncertainty around us? You spoke mm. in, to a little bit of that, um, mm. uh, somebody again said, "How could you? How would you cultivate a growth mindset coming out of this pandemic from when it when it seems like we are victims of this? You know, so right. it's not the kind of the people are. And then, uh, what do we do with people that have gone into um, the pandemic, into COVID, with already preconditions and mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the, like you said, these are the things that how we manage it. Yeah. Right, right. So maybe I can link the two. Um, mm. The one question was around how do I remain positive, and the other yep. one was how do I come out stronger. Yes. You know, this term that we use, um, it's not specific to psychology, but we talk about citizenship. Mm. It's about how am I a responsible citizen? How do I contribute to the way we live in the world? Um, that demonstrates that I'm aware of others that I have empathy towards others, and that I can balance my rights with the responsibility of taking care of others in terms of people and in terms of the environment. Sure. So, so that notion is quite important. And during this time, I think there's an, an amazing platform for us to think about how we embody citizenship. How, do we, how are we aware of the plight of our neighbor um, or down the street? or, you know, just somewhere in the world. Yeah. Um, so it's important that we, th we are able to see our own experiences and that we are also able to um, see the experience of others and then think about how we respond to that, um, yeah. you know, just in terms of, of how we think, but also in terms of our actions. So it's a real opportunity for volunteerism. You know, you can make masks and donate them. You can, you can, um, yeah, I have a lemon tree. So, for example, I, I pick lemons every, every week and I share it with my neighbors. So, right. and those are little things that you can do, but you, you can think about how others are impacted and how you can contribute to the experience in the world and how you can contribute to making this a little bit better during this time. And it's true, you know, that we've heard so many times that when we um, step out of ourselves and help others, we yeah. feel, we get the benefits of that, you know, in terms of how we feel in our mood. And so there is that um, that turnaround that's happening. And so that for me is really, really helpful. And I think in a time like this, as you say, it is an ideal time for us as individuals, mm -hmm. as a church, as neighbours to, to volunteer, to do something to actually... Yeah get out of our world because what I have yeah. found that if I'm not careful, I can go into a self-preservation mode and just check up on my little family, but actually this being able to be a citizen and see that I'm actually part of, of a much bigger, yeah. a much yeah. group, bigger yeah. group of people. That's um, not just me and my little family unit. So that's really, really good. So, um, yeah. Sorry. What, yes, yes. what the pandemic does is that it's a crisis. Right? I mean, it's, an, it's a global crisis. And often what happens is when we respond to crisis, we go into problem-solving mode. Yeah. And it's often when you're in, you, you in, in problem-solving mode, you don't pay attention to emotional processing. So you, you're so mm -hmm. quick to respond to that which needs to be fixed or attended sure. to that you don't stop to think about how it impacts you. Um, and I think that's an important part. You know, the... the the flip side is, is becoming so responsive to the crisis yeah. that you don't do the emotional processing and that's also not um, a good yeah. place to be. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, that's not that's not um, that's not good and healthy for us at all. So um, one of the questions that I want to get to levels of concern, which is we're all dealing with the trauma, as we said, of this mm -hmm. pandemic. But how do you deal with the stigma? And this is somebody um, who has who has um, is public now, made it public, um, dealing with the trauma of being diagnosed with COVID and feeling like a leper actually and feeling like mm. you didn't want anybody to know about feeling that sense of isolation rejection mm. while physically fighting this virus um yeah what do you say and i and i know several people that actually don't want people to know when they are tested positive because yeah. of the, yeah. yeah well it's it's a very fine line we walk between maintaining our privacy sure and um, and sharing appropriately so that we can access support and resources. Yeah. Okay? Um, at at times people say too much and everything is posted on Instagram, and at other times people don't say enough. So yeah. it's it's important that we strike that balance. I want to ask that we all remember that if you if you contract the flu, mm. you have a virus. You are not the flu. So in the same way, if you contract COVID, you have a virus. Sure. You, are yeah. mm -hmm. you are not the virus. So it's an important yeah. distinction to make. Yeah. And often when, when there is stigmatization, it's because we, we make ourselves um, to be the same as the condition. So, so that's, that's the first thing, is to, is to, in your mind, be very clear that, that's, that we need to separate those two things. And the second thing is that if you contract the virus, anybody can. Um, the Queen of England did, by the way, and so did her son. Um, you know, uh, yeah. anybody can. It's not a reflection of your lifestyle. It doesn't mean that you pretended to be on level one when everybody was in level five. Um, it means that, that, unfortunately, you contracted the virus. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. when you do, the most important thing is to activate all the plans and the solutions and the interventions to ensure that your health improves yeah. and then to be responsible so that you limit the infection for sure. others so that's really important and i think the 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 challenge we have is that it is unfortunately part of human nature mm. that we will engage in thinking that's prejudiced that's biased that that engages sort of in stigma, that, that's there. We, we unfortunately have to live with it. And I want to say that it's unfortunate that that happens and yeah. that some people um, experience that. And, uh, but I think it is not very really helpful to try and, um, and base our decisions and our actions around maintaining health and becoming healthy if we are ill sure. around stigma. You know, so... So it's, it's, it's a difficult situation. I think one needs to exercise um, a lot of uh, wisdom mm. in terms of who you disclose to and what you disclose um, so that your, the disclosure must, must, must contribute to people understanding sure. that they can then make decisions around how they interact. So yeah. yeah. I, I'm not sure that I'm answering the question fully for the person who asked it. But I think it's it's a very complex stigma is a very complex thing. It's so much part of human nature, and particularly in South Africa, we have yeah. such a terrible history with with stigma and um, and discrimination. Sure. Um, but I think what helps with COVID is that it is so universal. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it happens with everybody, and yeah. at this stage, if you are ill you need to surround yourself with people who are going to contribute to your recuperation and your improvement. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that would be important is to, is to try and disengage there. Yeah. Thank you. Phew, I can't believe how our time is moving on. And yeah, it, it, it really is. We're almost coming to the close. Of, I, I think it's going to almost be, I just want to check here. Oh, we got a little, we've got a little bit more time, so that's okay. I've got two kinds of timers going here. So, Prof, maybe we can talk about, um, there was somebody who was asking, how do I keep track, on track with my studies when family life, work, 
and everything else is happening in the same place all at once, I've really struggled to stay motivated and productive, you know, because of what's going on in, the, in my world. Right. I really feel for people who are studying at the moment because it's, it's quite difficult to, to do that in a confined space and not to have access to your, your learning spaces. Um, I think two of the things that would be quite helpful, again, is structure, is to try and introduce a structure that works for you. Now, um, staying at home uh, is easy for some of us because our homes are set up and they're conducive to um, living there for an extended period without leaving. And, and others don't have that luxury. Others have confined spaces and so forth. Um, so I think it's quite important that one, one structures your environment. So uh, you said earlier, I have four kids, and so we've got six people in this house, and it gets quite crazy. And all of us are, are Zooming at the same time, and we've had to learn, for example, to have a schedule. So I would say to my wife, what time is your meeting? And then I can move my meeting so that we're not Zooming at the same time and speaking you know, sort of over each other or listening into to, to private conversations. So, mm -hmm. so structure is important and working out the schedule that works for you. Mm -hmm. The second thing is to remember that these are not normal times. So I think it's important to not um, put yourself under so much pressure to do what you normally do under reduced resources and, and under different time constraints. So if you are a student, for example, um, or if you have a, a child at home that you're having to manage through homeschooling, do what you can um, and, and, and try to plan. Try to plan ahead, know when your deadlines are, um, and figure out what, what bite of the, of the cake or the pie would be an appropriate size bite for you to take and manage over the next week. So break it down. You know, this is an elephant you're eating and you can only eat it one bite at a time. So break it down, figure out those smaller units. And as you complete units, it would actually give you a better sense of accomplishment um, than if you're looking at this big thing of, um, that you still have to complete. And then that becomes quite discouraging. Okay, that's really helpful. My heart goes out to our students, to our learners. Um, who who are really struggling in this time and trying to to manage all of this in in their world so i want to just take us to i was thinking about it you know if i had I, we had really have a privilege of having a psychologist here with us um, i'm not a psychologist my work i'm a pastor and i do pastoral care and of course these things cross but i want to ask prof if there was if you had a group of people your family, what was, and I know there are no silver bullets and I'm not looking for that. What's that one word that you would speak to your group that would, uh, when it comes to how do we maintain um, our mental health in a pandemic? What, what would you be saying to people? Because we, we're all in it. We're all dealing with our emotions that are up and down. And, and, and honestly, there's some days I wake up, I think it feels like a groundhog day. You know, it's like, oh, we're doing this yes. day. Yeah. It really, I've yeah, been, yeah. sorry. Yeah, no, no, Carry especially on. when you have to clean, right? I, oh. I, um, I tease my wife when I say she's trying to clean the house to World Health Organization standards. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to do it every day. So, exactly. Um, so I, okay. I would say that uh, I would actually start with Luke 2, verse 52. Beautiful. Um, and in that particular part of scripture, um, it describes how Jesus grew. Mm. Um, and it says he grew in, in spirit. So, um, you know, in his relationship with God, he grew in his relationship with man, so socially. He grew physically in stature. Um, and he grew in wisdom. So mm. cognitively he grew. And I would say that probably the way to get through any crisis is to try and maintain balanced development mm. and to maintain balance in your life. Mm. So it's important to look after your thought life, to um, continue challenging yourself, to sure. learn what you can, um, but to, to work with your, your mind because your mind is such a powerful weapon so, um, and asset. So... It's important to, to really pay attention to that. It's important to pray to your, your physical being. 
um, you know, um, I'm going to say I'm the first one who must listen to my own advice today because I sit for very long hours in Zoom meetings yeah. and then my body is stiff and sore. Um, but it's important that we pay attention to um, our physical development and managing that. Yeah. And then if yeah. it's, it's important to maintain to our um, maintain our uh, relationship with God and with man, so spiritually and socially, it's important to develop and manage those. And when we are able to to maintain a balance of sorts between those four, with our spiritual development as the axis and the other three working around it, we are able to weather any storm sure. that comes our way. So um, you know. Um, that that would be where I would say one would need to start, mm. and then I'm going to to just add to that. Uh, maybe the follow up to to that bullet is um, is look for the silver lining. Beautiful. You know, um, I am enjoying not having to drive around. Sure. I'm, <laughs> I'm grateful for many things that I haven't been able to do. So yeah. look look for um, alongside all the challenges that you experience. Look for those things that maybe have been surprises in this, yeah. in this, in this time. And that, that has reminded us to slow down and to look at the quality of our lives and the quality of our relationships. Beautiful. Lovely. Thank you, Prof. Love that, that even in a time like this, we can look for the surprises of God, you know, and he loves to surprise us. And it's often in the very ordinary um, mm -hmm. Things of life, you know, just the small, simple things of yeah. life. Like you say, you don't, you, you know, not having to travel like that or yeah. or having more time to be with the family in terms of connection. And so, yeah, I think there are the silver linings and um, it's good for us to train our minds to notice these things, to mm -hmm. be aware of it and then to offer up our gratitude and our gratefulness to God, yeah. you know, that there are the beautiful things in this, in this yeah. lockdown. And I think that also helps with maintaining our mental health, you know, um, Absolutely. yeah, yeah, so that we come up, um, that's the build a resiliency and then um, agility inside of us in how we respond. Maria, yeah. thank you for your time. I, this has been absolutely delightful, incredible, and I, I really regard it a privilege that I've got to spend this little bit of time you know, in, the, in our chat about maintaining, maintaining our mental health in, in the pandemic. And so this has really been such wisdom for us. And we know that we can take it and add it to our toolbox in life and, 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 you know, and do what we need to do. And so, I, you know, what I've discovered whenever we have these kind of discussions, it raises other things inside of us. And so if there's something that's been raised in you, um, I don't want you to carry this on your own. We have a group of counsellors, a counselling service at our church that you can connect with and folk will journey with you. So on the screen below will be where you can make contact with us. But otherwise, let's not do this journey on our own let's not carry these burdens on our own we want to be able to journey with you and just walk each other home in this pandemic so wonderful once again um yeah i think this is our last of our um monday night chats and so i'm looking forward to the future who knows what is waiting for us bless you oh, in jesus name